piston out a little bit so it can accept the new rings. Um, just basically want, going to want to get all this carbon carbon buildup out of here. Acetone might help or a little bit of brake clean just to loosen up. Then I just simply take an old ring, snap it in half and just use it to, to get the grooves. Once all our ring grooves are clean, we're just going to come by and check each ring for piston ring side clearance. We want no more than three thousandths of an inch as per Bentley spec. Now we're going to start installing our rings. First we're going to start with the oil expander ring. Do these by hand, they're pretty easy, the oil rings. Just make sure you're not overlapping, make sure you're butting the ends and do not overlap the ends. I'm going to put our bottom oil rail in. Followed by our top oil rail. With our oil ring installed, we can go ahead and install our second compression ring. Just make sure it's oriented in the right direction. There's a label on the ring designating the top. So we'll put it in our ring expander tool. Followed by top compression ring. Again, make sure it's oriented in the right direction. There you go. Rings installed. Alright, I then clocked the rings into place. As you can see, I got a little map here drawn as to how they were clocked. The Bentley doesn't give too much of a spec on um, the ring clocking other than that they're 120 degrees apart, so I stuck more or less to the manufacturer's specifications here. Um, as you can see, with reference to the timing belt, um, I set my first ring. This is the oil expander ring. It's the spring type ring in the center of the oil scraper. Line that up with the wrist pin. Then I laid my bottom oil rail an inch to the right and my top oil rail an inch to the left and then I set my um, second compression ring at 120 degrees to this oil expander and then I set my first compression ring at 120 degrees to the second compression ring. Alright, now to prepare the rods for install I'm going to have to knock these caps off. I'm going to use the wooden handle of a hammer. They are held in place by dowel pins, so we're just going to have to wedge them out. Just keep in mind that if you happen to lose orientation that both tangs are on the same side. Alright, now we can install the bearing shells. Just keep in mind you're only lubricating the inner surfaces of the bearings. Make sure all your surfaces are nice and clean. At this point in time, we are only going to hit this upper surface with assembly lubricant because we will be doing plastic aging on the lower surface. So only lubricate this upper side for now. Now with all your piston and ring surfaces coated with some ND30 oil, you're going to want to also coat the inside of your ring compressor tool with some oil, just so everything slips in nice and easy. Set it in place. Go 
don't want to crank it around your rings. <clears throat> Leaving about a quarter inch of the piston skirt sticking out. All right, now with our crank set to bottom dead center now, and our cylinder wall lubed up with some assembly lubricant. Let's be extra careful. Set the piston down in place. Be extra careful, if you get hung up, just stop, don't force it. There you go, piston installed. Now you're just gonna wanna guide the rod into place, just try not to scratch the crank journal here. Slowly push it down, and guide it right over the crank. Okay, now that our rod's in place, we're just gonna clean off the crank journal here. Make sure there's no oil on the surface because plastic gauge will dissolve in oil. Also, make sure you're dealing with a clean cap um, with bearing. Make sure there's no oil in that also. Um, and then we're gonna apply the plastic gauge. Um, now the plastic gauge is basically a thin strand of plastic and depending upon how much it flattens out, it's gonna determine your clearances. Naturally, the more it flattens out, the tighter your clearances. There happens to be two methods to bring these ARP fasteners to torque spec. One by either a stretch gauge or two with a torque wrench. I'm going to be using the torque wrench method. Basically, we're going to have to run these bolts through two torque cycles prior to final torquing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them to 50 foot-pounds once, loosen them. That's going to be the stage with the plastic gauge. Then I'm going to bring them to 50 foot-pounds again, loosen them, and then bring them to 50 foot-pounds once more, and that will be my final torque. Just make sure right before install to apply the Molly lubricant. I'm going to lay a little piece of plastic gauge in place. Again, make sure the surfaces are just dry, no oil. Then going to align my cap, just make sure the tangs are on the same side. And start our bolts. Now after tightening, I'm going to torque the bolts to half the spec. I'm setting the wrench here to 25 foot-pounds right now. I'm going to bring them up. Gonna step it up a little more. I'll go up to about 35. And once again to the final spec of 50 foot pounds. What about uh, Larry Zabisco? What are your memories of Larry Zabisco? Fuck the Larry Zabisco! You don't like him? Okay. What about Ted DiBiase? Fuck the Ted DiBiase! Okay.